blessings and blessings. Hurrah! Hurrah! Good to see you guys. I am having a fantastic day. And a part of this day was a moment or two where I was pretty damn triggered and really upset. And that is the topic of today's conversation. Anger has many faces, many faces. And growing up as a little boy in a Western culture, we, we are often in some ways shown that anger is the one emotion that we can show that we won't be made fun of for. We can get in trouble for it, but we won't be made fun of for. If you're too happy and too joy filled, somebody may push you down. If you're um, too sad or emotional, somebody may call you gay or a faggot or whatever the case may be. And these are the connotations and the way through film and television and all the other stuff that we've, we've sort of been with in our Western culture, these are some of the ways in which we've been able to be with anger. And so, uh, and good to see all of you fellas jumping in here. First people that jumped in was all men and men I know. So blessings and blessings, fellas. Some of you guys are man cave grads, so mm, 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 you know what that means. Um, I really want to talk about something. First of all, pouting, silence, sarcasm, all of these things are forms of anger. And some men have innies and some men have outies, meaning some men show their anger at a, in a way in which it's very easy to see, while other men have this same type of anger, maybe even deeper, maybe even crazier, but it comes out through sarcasm. It comes out through pouting. It comes out in these ways in which we we emotionally feel like, ah, this person is like sucking the freaking air out of the room, but it's not so crazy that it, it, we deem it a problem or an issue. And as the title suggested, punching a wall is actually better than, and type yes if you're on here and you have punched a wall, just type yes. If you've ever hit a wall or grabbed a chair and like sort of threw it or, or like, punched your own hand or something like that. This is actually, if you don't actually break your hand, in some ways a healthy way to express your anger. And it is 1000% better than stuffing it down. Hmm. Denying that it exists. Tomorrow I'm gonna do a video on the sort of ultra spiritual sort of man boys that pretend and deny and denounce their own masculinity. And allowing yourself to mm, express mm, what is there for you in a moment, as long as it's not physically violent towards another person or self-destructive in a way in which it actually like hurts you or costs someone else something, then bro, feel it. Push it, move it. This is actually a beautiful thing. And here's the part B to this anger thing. In my work, I often say, your complaint is your mission. Well, a complaint, a different way to say that is your desire is your mission. So a lot of times, <laughs> does a concrete floor count? Um, and you broke your hand. <sighs> this, is, this is a very, like, as you can see, almost every guy in here typed yes. And I really want to touch on this for any of you women also in here. I'm sure you've had a similar experience where you've had a guy or met a guy who's, who's done this, right? This is not something voluntary. Most of us wouldn't think, oh, let me punch a wall and break my damn hand. Um, however, going back to the part B of this conversation, anger is usually attached to a desire that is not being met. So there's a desire for something to be happening there's a longing for something to be happening and it's not happening. And so what tends to happen in those moments is anger shows up and it has many forms and faces and looks. Sometimes it's just, I'm good. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. You're not fucking good, bro. Other times it's like, really? You know, it's like pouty. It's like sarcastic. It's mean. It's bitchy, right? Whatever it is, it comes out. As long as it's not violent, the coming out part 
is actually a beautiful thing. And I want to give you a tool, and this is something that I'm constantly working through with myself. When it arises, I do a couple things. One, I investigate what's the desire or the need underneath the anger that is surfacely showing up. So all of us have the, the, the thing that's in front, but what's underneath that? What's behind that? Ah, there's a desire, there's a dream, there's something here that's not being checked off or met. And in those moments, you have two choices. I say to myself, either I'm gonna go get it or I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna renounce it. I'm gonna decide that it's not worth it. But either way, I must make the choice and the decision because from that space, I am now in my power position. I am no longer a victim to it if I decide, you know what, this doesn't work. Um, James said, can you define violence for clarity's sake? Well, I think my definition will be different than everybody's because I know many people who are violent with their language. Um, but what I mean by violent is actually physically harming another person or damaging someone else's property um, in a way in which it costs them or being violent to yourself. So if you're cutting yourself or punching yourself in the face, not a good idea. Now, for me, as I mentioned, the anger shows up and I investigate it. Ah, what's here? What am I looking to check off? What just happened that has me so upset? What's under it? Ah, what's under it is I feel misunderstood. Ah, what's under it is I feel or, um, or experiencing myself being used by certain people. Oh, what's under it is a sense of overwhelm based on all the other things that have been happening in my life. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna choose to create space in my life and go get it and make that thing a reality, the desire underneath the thing, or I'm gonna look at it, decide, look at it and go, you know what, this is not really true for me. And then I shift my neurology by breathing <sighs> into my damn toes. And then I shift my physiology. <sighs> and then make a choice. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys have ever met like a bitter old man a grumpy ass old man that just carries around like a, a tone of like, not fun, not fun to be around. Well, that's what happens when our anger is not addressed. When we deny and suppress and pretend and stuff down because we want to be good boys and good husbands and citizens for everybody else because everybody's afraid of our anger. When we play that game, we become grumpy ass old men. But you can just remove the old part. Type yes if you have or know at least one guy who's not what we would call old, who's grumpy as hell, who just carries a frequency um, of, what's the word? Heaviness. Um, James, re put your question back in here. Uh, somehow I'm not seeing where I saw quite a few questions actually. Um, do, do, do. When I get angry, I like to emotionally hurt people, which feels violent. That's why I asked. Yes, exactly. Um, which is what I said. My experience is that I know quite a few people who linguistically are deeply violent and use those linguistics to emotionally abuse people. This is definitely a part of it, which is why um, in our teachings and what we do in Unleash the Beast and in Man Cave, which starts July 27th, for any of you guys who are hearing this and you're understanding that you need a brotherhood, you need a path, you, you want to have a crew to do this work with, July 27th, PrestonSmiles.com forward slash Man Cave. But in our work, what we teach and remind people of is that we are still animals. The reptilian brain still exists. And just like all the other animals on the planet, right? When a, when a dog is upset, they growl, they bark. When a cat has an experience, it hisses, right? It matches the experience with expression. But what a lot of humans do is we have an experience and then we 
emotionally try to cognize it uh, and, and, and then use it and justify and push and press instead of just allowing ourselves to move the energy, which is why I said, and the title of this video is why punching a wall is better than and healthier than doing this emotional distancing or emotional abuse. This is one of the reasons James and many other men why women have attempted to label every man that ever broke up with him as a narcissist, right? And this, everyone's a toxic masculinity. Like, bro, everybody's toxic in some ways. I know and coach thousands of women who are assholes. So, but this is a part of it, right? I think, my opinion, is that most men are afraid of their own thump. They're afraid to actually rev the engine, pedal to the metal and move. And so because they're disowning their own, right? Because they're disowning that aspect of themselves in their career, in their family, in their, in their friend groups, wherever it is, because they're disowning it and then hiding behind the computer screens and jacking off all night to porn. When the time does come where they're triggered and they're experiencing all of this stuff that's coming up, there's a Oof, big explosion and the explosion happens in multiple different ways and so it's our job our duty as conscious men as brothers understanding that iron sharpens iron that only a conscious man can support and raise up and help another conscious man that's our job to lean in to lean in to love on each other to do this work together not so that we fix ourselves but so that we elevate the conversation about man because I don't know if, I, I, I'm sure, I don't know about you, but like, I meet so many, so many beautiful, amazing, kind-hearted, amazing men. A lot of which are on this live right now. I know you guys. I've met you, I've hugged you. I've been in your space. And yet, there are a bunch of people who may consider you and are judging you because you're a man. Um, nothing but love, truly, truly, truly appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, from my heart to yours, uh, thank you. Peace.